All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve a problem. x minus 4 to the power of 4 is equal to x to the power of 4. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting this as x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And now I'm going to subtract x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 on both sides. So these two cancel out, and I get x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 minus x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So now I get x minus 4 squared plus x squared times x minus 4 squared minus x squared is equal to 0. So x minus 4 squared is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I have this plus x squared is equal to 0. This is one equation. And I have x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus x squared is equal to 0. So from my left-hand side, I get 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. And if I divide both sides by 2, I get x squared minus 4x plus 8 is equal to 0. For my right hand side, these two cancel out and I get negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So I'm going to first solve for my right hand side. So I'm going to add 8x on both sides. So I get 8x is equal to 16. Now if I divide both sides by 8, these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 2. Now for my left hand side, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I get x is equal to negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16 minus 4 times 1 times 8 all over 2 times 1. This is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 32 over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 16i over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is equal to 2 plus or minus 2i. So the, these are my three solutions. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation two to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 10. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by rewriting eight as two to the power of three. So I get two to the power of three to the power of x is equal to 10. Now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So I get 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 10 because I switched the places of 3 and x. Now from here, I'm going to let 2 to the power of x equal to the variable y. So now I get y plus y to the power of 3 is equal to 10. And if I subtract 10 on both sides, I get y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 is equal to 0. Now, what I need to do is first find one solution of y, and then once I have that solution, I can find the remaining solutions. So to do that and find that first solution, I'm just going to test values of y. So we're going to start with y equals 1. So when y equals 1, I have 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 minus 10 is equal to 0. Well, 1 to the power of 3 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus 10 is negative 8, which does not equal 0. So this does not work. Now I'm going to try y equals 2. So when y equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 minus 10 is equal to 0. Now 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so I have 8 plus 2 minus 10, 
a plus 2 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So this works, meaning y equals 2 is a solution. So what I'm going to do is divide y to the power of 3 plus y minus 10 by y minus 2, because y minus 2 equals 0, well, y equals 2 is a solution. So to do this, I'm going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to look at the coefficients of my numerator, and I have 1, which is the coefficient of y to the power of 3, 0, which is the coefficient of y squared. Remember, we're going order. 1, again, which is the coefficient of y, and negative 10. And just to let you guys know, the 0 is there because this is supposed to be y squared because we're going in order. But because there is no y squared, we put a 0 in front of it. And this is all with 2. And if you guys are still confused by this, you should look up a video on synthetic division. So I'm going to first start by moving down my 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So I have a remainder of 0. And I'm going to use these as my coefficients. So I get y squared plus 2y plus 5. Meaning y squared plus 2y plus 5 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. So this is my equation, and I'm going to divide this into two equations. y squared plus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0, and y minus 2 is equal to 0. So now for y minus 2 equals 0, I'm going to add 2 on both sides, so I get y is equal to 2. And for y squared plus 2y plus 5 equals 0, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I get y equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2 times 1. And this turns to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 20 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. And because we have the square root of a negative number, we cannot use the solution of y. I mean, you can only use y equals 2 as a solution. And remember, we're solving for x, not y. And we let 2 to the power of x equal to y. So I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 2. And the only solution to this would be x equals 1, because 2 to the power of 1 is equal to itself. So x equals 1 is my solution to this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this video to your friends or family. Thank you. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x is equal to 3. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by taking the ln or natural log on both sides. So I get ln of x to the power of x is equal to ln of 3. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln x to the power of x, and I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln x is equal to ln 3. Now, I'm going to use an important formula called the W Lambert formula. And it states that if I take the W of something in the form A times E to the power of A, then this is equal to A. So this is the W Lambert formula. So in this case, I'm going to rewrite this so that it suits the W Lambert formula. So we need to change this to be in the form A times E to the power of A. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to first start by rewriting this x as e to the power of ln of x because x e to the power of ln cancel out so that's just x is all that remains so x is the same thing as e to the power of ln x and i have this times ln x is equal to ln 3. so now notice how this is in the form a times e to the power of a a in this case being ln x so it's 
from ln x times e to the power of ln x is equal to ln 3. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, I get w of ln x times e to the power of ln x is equal to ln 3, and this is just equal to a. So, and sorry, I have to take the w on both sides, so I get w of ln 3, and then now I'm left with ln of x is equal to w of ln 3. Now, I want to get rid of this ln, so I'm just going to take e to the power of both sides. e to the power of ln is, these two cancel out, so I get x is equal to e to the power of w of ln of 3. So this is my answer to this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and check out uh, other videos that are similar to these on my channel. Thank you.